Good evening and welcome back. Now, uh, a few weeks ago I did look at the Magnavox Odyssey Squared and while I did enjoy the console I thought to myself uh, it's somewhat retro but not retro enough. After all it was the second generation. So I put on my investigating hat and I walked out and found myself something from the very first generation. Sadly no it isn't a Magnavox Odyssey. You've probably read the title just up there and that automatically debunks it so we already know what I'm talking about. Yep, we're looking at the APF TV Fun Machine here. And this is what I mean by retro, fake wood panelling. More so than the 2600. It's uh, completely covered in it. And for mind, I think it looks a bit like a old car. The front of a car. There's your headlights, there's your bonnet, that's the bit just before the windshield, etc. Anyway, we're not here to compare this to other items, we're here to look at this item. Let's do that now. As we can see, that's the badge, that's how we know it's an APF TV fun machine. There's your game selections. We have tennis, we have hockey, we've got handball and we've got practice. They're written here to correspond to this, the game selecting knob, which is like the very old television channel selectors from very old televisions. Mmm, that feels nice and solid. There's your start slash reset button, there's your on off, and these are your um, options. There's no on-screen options, you have to do it on the uh, actual hardware. As we can see there, and you can alter them mid-game too, so we'll have a look at that a bit later. Also, this little um, grate here, let's have a listen. I haven't added these beeps in. The speaker's actually built inside the console and the sounds come from this rather than the television set, which um, caught me by surprise actually, I didn't realise that consoles did that. Anyway, we'll turn that off so it's not beeping at us all the way through. Uh, before we have a look at the controller, I'm told that we need to go and get a report from Nine News. Tonight at Nine News, the Royal Duchess is in labour. Liberal leader Tony Abbott is not amused. And a shocking twist in our plug of Nine's new show, Australia's got the next top reality program live. All this and less on Nine at Six. Quality journalism indeed. Now, where were we? Let's have a look at the controller, which is here. I'll also bring in, this is a current generation controller, a PlayStation 3 with multiple buttons and multiple um, joysticks. It's Bluetooth enabled, also can connect with via USB. This has a knob that you can turn. That pretty much sums it up. Uh, it's a black cylinder. Turn that there, you can open up it and have a look at the wires inside and yeah you can see you can actually hide um, hide a few things in there I reckon could be a good little hide and seek toy this and yep it's wired to the console however unlike the Magnavox Odyssey the controllers can be detached so you can replace them move them take them to your friends place or whatever however the aim not AV the antenna this thing was vented way before AV composite jacks. Um, yeah, that's hardwired into the console. Sadly, this console didn't actually come with its RF unit, so I'm using a very old Master System one, which does the trick, which is good. So, um, yeah, that's what it looks like. Let's have a look at what the games look like. Well, I've hooked it up, and amazingly, my new TV actually recognises the TV fun machine and is broadcasting it in slightly grainy quality so incredible I can actually show you this from the uh, from the set as it were as you can see this is um this is tennis this is game one also known as Pong um, this is a two-player machine so there's supposed to be another bat on the screen there if I had another controller and also a friend to play with so instead I'm just showing you the easiest game of Pong you'll ever see in your life anyway we'll flick the switch over to game 2 now which is hockey as you can see it changes it ever so slightly by adding some uh, walls in the corners and giving me an extra paddle that paddle there is of course the extra paddle there on the screen rather is also controlled by me so presumably if two players played there'd be another two paddles on the screen. Yep, pretty simple. Let's have a look at game three. There we go. Uh, it's handball, but for some reason 
Uh, this game just doesn't seem to register the paddle's position as the ball passes straight through it. Um, be interested to see what happens if you actually had two players for this one and see what the actual rules are because it seems I'm getting a lot of points. Anyway, we'll move on to the final one. This is practice, where you're just up against the screen pretty much. This is as close as you get to single player. So I can actually um, show you something of uh, skill here. Basically you just need to keep it paddling against the wall and the numbers at the top of the screen count how many times you've fucked up. Five in my case. Anyway, this will be a good screen to show off um, what happens if I flip some of those switches that change the game's difficulty from amateur to professional. We'll start by changing the angle of the ball to professional. Let's see what the difference is. Oh yes, you can see the angles are far steeper. Remember, all these sounds, except for my voice, obviously, are coming out of the actual console and not the television set. Alrighty, we'll change the uh, bat size now to professional. As you can see, far smaller. Oh, it's um, getting past me, this one. And finally... We'll change the ball speed now to professional. As you can see, it's um, very difficult now. We'll flick the other two back to amateur and see if I can actually hit this ball. No, I'm not having any sort of luck whatsoever. No. Oh, I think that one just passed straight through the bat then. So maybe it's gone back to the... Oh wait, no. As soon as it hits 15, it clocks out and doesn't register the bat. Hang on, I'll reset it. Here we go. Ah, yeah, there we are. That was the problem. Oh. So yeah, well, that's your TV fun machine. And back in the very early days of video games, probably would have been quite impressive to actually control the action on screen. Anyway, let's have a good. Let's uh, wander back to my corner. And we're back. About by time. Oi, it's enough out of you. Back to this machine. Um, what do I make of it? It's historically interesting is what I make of it. I think it's unfair to review this against anything outside of its time, so I'd have to go back to 1976 when this first came out to uh, fairly review something. And this is actually the oldest game console that I have now, so... I've got nothing to actually compare this against. Even the Magnavox Odyssey squared or the Atari 2600 is still a little bit too far away from this as this doesn't have interchangeable games. So yeah, I can't really review it. Um, if you like old knickknacks and game consoles then you'd probably love this for its appearance and its inbuilt speakers. But um, in terms of actual gameplay there's so many better machines nowadays for me. I'm going to put this on my shelf, I'm going to put it behind probably a glass door and just quietly admire it like this. Perhaps maybe without the plane flying overhead though. Alrighty then, off to the shelf with you. Oh, uh, actually, while you're still there, I might just uh, plug something else that I'm doing now. I'll pop this down here, it's a North Sydney jersey. I'm actually doing some video footage for the North Sydney Bears Football Club now. They're playing in New South Wales Cup as well as a few other divisions below in the Junior Leagues. And yes, I'm doing highlights packages for them. So if you're a fan of Rugby League, or if you're an old fan of the Bears before the whole Super League war came and tore Rugby League in twain, head over to their official YouTube channel. I've put the description, I've put the link rather, in the description below. And, um, yeah, give us a couple of hits and uh, make us feel loved. Alright, off. Go and do your other internet shenanigans now. <laughs>